Greetings, YouTube. So I've got a delectable burger. And um, some nice fries from Steak and Shake. I'm going to review the singles off of Night Vision. So. Yeah, I remember Radioactive, which was actually, in Billboard's opinion, the top, the number three rock song of the decade. And then also uh, Demons, songs like that. I know there were probably four or five of them, so I'm going to have some fun with that. Alright folks, so I wanted to get back on the topic of some rock music, and uh, I do listen to rock uh, radio stations more often than I listen to the pop ones, but I, I just haven't recently, but I'm gonna, I want to kind of see how things have been. The holiday malaise, you know, that sort of stuff has just been kind of um, delaying the effect of getting some new appreciable music, but... You know, I, I reflected on, you know, Imagine Dragons, and I kind of thought, you know, for all their popularity with their last two albums, the one with Believer on it, and then the, the other one that came out in 2018, they've mastered the idea of having a huge rock album that not just is for rock charts, but is also for uh, uh, pop and that sort of thing. It, you know, there's casual and mainstream listeners that can say, yeah, I know who Imagine Dragons is. So obviously for me to just go in on some of the rock songs that they have, I kind of find that appreciative. But I do remember hearing Imagine Dragons like seven years ago, particularly a couple songs I mentioned when I was eating. But that's kind of the thing. I mean, it makes me like the Night Visions album that I'm talking about right now. So... Uh, I mean, really, they, there's more to it. There were five singles, but it really felt like only three of the three of them really made a lot of noise. But that, you know, really though, out of the three that made noise, I only like two of those. And really, I preferred the one that was released uh, Europe's radio. So, all right, we'll get into the order of talking about these. So, the first one is "It's Time," which came out on their heralded EP from 2012 that came out before this project. I really don't like this song. I mean, I think I've heard it in commercials before, and I recall hearing it on the radio. It probably is the third biggest song of the singles that they released. It actually had some mainstream appeal, hit number 15 on the Billboard 100. But I really, it, it feels like something that uh, Mumford and Sons would do. It kind of crosses over into like adult, contemporary territory which is not so much of a problem but I, I really just didn't like the tempo of the song and it, it, it kind of did not feel entirely like a rock song as much as almost like a pseudo country song so that's kind of the vibes that I got from that but I mean I, it's I suppose in some cases you could say it's catchy but it's really not my cup of tea but I do like the next single which is radioactive so this one was the biggest single out of all five of the ones they released, and uh, it uh, hit number three on the Billboard 100. I remember the song. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty good. I mean, really, the, the singing is particularly catchy. I mean, that one feels the most crafted for radio, and it's probably one of their most distinct songs, distinct songs even today. So I, I, I really can't complain too much about this song. I mean, back in the day, I, I kind of, it, it, I was thinking it was overplayed, but now I actually appreciate it. So the third one is Hear Me, and I like this one. This is another mid-tempo song that actually is pretty fierce when you think about it. Uh, it's not too lazy. It, just has, it has the right flow. The singing is right on the song. And I, I felt like I was surprised that if it just would have had a more amicable topic, it probably would have charted a lot higher because it didn't chart that high in America. I think it it didn't even crack the top the top twenty six of the rock charts here. But um, I I was surprised because it was just how catchy the song was. But I think it just had to do with maybe. 
I don't know, I can't think of maybe this was not presentable in terms of radio position just because radioactive it's time demons i don't know i mean i need to probably listen to the song most more thoroughly but i would say that it i don't know this I, I it's not too many reasons why i can figure out why that didn't chart that well here but it's it's pretty i mean it actually has a groove to it you know so just like radioactive does and then demons that feels like a winter song i was kind of glad that they released that in like late 2012 winter of 2013 this because it just feels so chilling and you know the topic of just dealing with the demons and your problems and I, I i mean it's catchy i mean the hook is catchy and uh i i do appreciate that song and i i do remember that one also this is pretty much i mean those it's time radioactive and demons are the ones that made the most noise but I actually, I mean, I was glad that this, it was, I think it was because of this demon song that proved that, uh, you know, Imagine Dragons was going to be here for longer. I feel like artists will drop certain songs, and when you hear that song, it's like, yeah, this is not just someone that's going to go away after a year or two. I'm trying to think of songs that did that, but normally that happens with like the third or fourth single if they hit like the top 15 four times it's like yeah this is not you know this is more of a prince michael jackson type thing more than like a you know certain like a b-list artist or something which is good you know that's the good thing about demons i was glad for that but unfortunately the fifth single is probably the worst of the five singles that came out but the fact that they made it to the fifth single and they all charted on the united states rock charts is pretty damn good so I don't know. It just to me it was just a clumsy song. I didn't like the production on the song or the instrumentation. Um, it it just did not have the execution of the first four. I wish that they would have just released "Hear Me." I wish that they would have just released "Hear Me" to uh, a radio. In, instead you know after demons because that probably would have been a decent spring song or something like that but i don't know i mean you'll have to it, it, i mean it has worse production than it's time it kind of i mean if it's time just kind of feels like a nice work song and this real low-key um trying to think of what i mean this relaxation this kind of house music i mean on top of the world is uh I don't know. I, I couldn't really see what it was aiming for. I don't know. But, I mean, for their debut, the fact that they got to the first, the fifth single on their first project is, you know, that's really damn good. So I'm, I'm probably going to review the singles from these guys more often. is because I remember Believer and Thunder and, you know, Natural and some of these songs. I mean, all of those are, you know, thumbs up. And that's the thing. I mean, they get... I don't think they got to five singles, maybe on their 2017 album, but I don't think they did on their 2018. So I just feel like supporting these guys just to kind of reflect, you know, the fact that Imagine Dragons has been doing it since, you know, almost in, you know, 10 years now. So it's, you know, I appreciate that. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to score it. I forgot about that. So I'm going to, because I like three out of five of them, I'm just going to give it like a five and a half just because I like uh demons and radioactive extremely and i really like um i really like hear me also but i was just i like hear me also but the fact that out of the three songs that charted you know on the billboard 100 which is great for a rock song i felt like it's time was kind of lousy i mean that one just felt really and I guess that's kind of the thing. I mean, you have to have like this kind of uh, pleasant songs more so than just up tempo and you know fierce songs. I mean, I think they were aiming for like a uh, variety in terms of just accessibility towards every type of audience. So that to that end, I would say if I if I didn't have personal opinion, I'd probably score this album higher. But I, I couldn't vibe with its time. And I really didn't like On Top of the World. So that's, you know, I would give it a six, but I just feel like, uh, you know, I, I think obviously I would have liked 
another song specifically more like Radioactive and Hear Me. I mean, I think that they could have done it, but maybe six maybe six singles would have been too many. But yeah, so five, I mean, yeah, five and a half out of ten just because, you know, rent, you know, getting five and giving back two. I mean, that's this kind of thing. I suppose I should give it a higher score, but, you know, that's, um, that's kind of my thoughts on the matter, you know. But, you know, normally, and that's the thing, I would not normally complain about the fact, I mean, normally my, one of my bigger complaints is the fact that there's not more than two or three singles, but just the fact that they did it, but I felt like the choices were, you know, they needed to be done, but I, I guess it's just as more personal complaints as to why I didn't appreciate, like, the shit that they did. But maybe it boosted their, I think maybe their choices probably got them to where, in some cases, to where they were. But, you know, just, you have to kind of say which one are you more jumping for joy if you were to see them in concert. I mean, that's kind of, but, you know, so yeah, five and a half out of ten, but really... The success of these singles, the fact that all of them have like hundreds of millions of plays on Spotify says that really the social score, which means the casual idea behind it, should probably be like an eight. I would just say because five singles, four of them at least were outstanding in terms of recognition. So that's kind of the thing.